but here he is, Roach King. What's up, man? Appreciate you tuning in. Yeah, man. As I just told you, I just got done uh, working out outside. I'm freaking beat to shit right now. No, hey, I, I hear you. He confirmed, folks. He was not in five points. He, yeah, he, I went. To be honest, I wish I was. That'd, that'd be. <laughs> My guy, how was uh how was the weekend at the Roach Ranch, man? I saw you had the TVs fired up and tons of football. I'm sure you were tuned in last night to LSU, Florida State. How, how's the the weekend been watching ball? I mean, I'm sure you've enjoyed the hell out of it. Yeah, man, it's been good. Uh, that was probably the most my most profitable uh, week one of uh, sports gambling ever. So that was nice. <laughs> who was your uh who was your big winner? Was it just a bunch of victories uh, yeah. adding up? I hit a uh, I hit an eight team um, parlay. So eight team. Yeah. Holy shit, my friend. Yeah, it was it was nice. Um, I was gonna hit a nice little three team one uh last night and then the fucking LSU uh blocker can't can't block you close down, you close down, you block down on an extra point. You don't you let the outside guy go. You don't you don't do that. And that's anyways, that was the backdoor cover anyway, so whatever. Dude, what a what a brutal way to lose, by the way. My God. It was awesome. It was I, on the other side of it. I loved when NC State won. That was part of my eighteen parlay. I picked that money line. Oh yeah, see the college was, kickers giveth and college kickers giveth or taketh away, my friend. I'll tell yeah, you who, sure. who uh, who's the freaking badass kicker is uh, is our guy right now, man. He uh, he booted the hell out of those kicks. Yeah, let, let's start on the positive, Stephen, because of course we got you here to talk about what happened on the field Saturday night. Gamecocks getting the thirty-five to fourteen win over Georgia State. We'll start. With this right here, Beamer Ball. What a night for Beamer Ball, by the way. Um, <clears throat> great night for the brand, great night for the business, and great night for Beamer Ball because Mitch Jeter, like you mentioned, nailing the 53 and 51 yarders, just ice in his veins. Had no problem at all. And then the two block punts. I mean, I, I guess I'd ask, are you surprised at all, man? It's literally Shane Beamer. I have to remind people all the time, like, Beamer Ball, where did it come from? The special teams and what his dad did at Va Tech was great to see that facet of the game be such a positive for this football team. A hundred percent, man. A hundred percent. I mean, that that literally changes the momentum of every single game. You have a block punt, especially that's recovered and returned for a touchdown. I mean, that takes the wind out of any sales. I mean, it doesn't matter how much you're up by or how little. I mean, it doesn't matter. That changes your entire momentum of the game. And I remember, I remember being in high school and even, you know, like as a little kid, seeing Virginia Tech blocking punts and scoring on kickoff returns. I mean, that's that's what the Beamer people do. I mean, they they are special teams guys. It's uh, it is good to see that on uh, on our sidelines now. Steven, I apologize, dude. I think we just had like a power flutter or something in the studio because the power just literally went out for a second in the place. <laughs> I think the must jam Packers. So. I do apologize, my friend. I, I I don't know what I just literally saw it just and you were gone. Um, anyways, yeah, back to like you said, the special teams, the block punts, game changer for this football team. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, it's good to see that on uh, on our sideline for for a change. So that's uh, if we can keep that going, man. That that like you said, it's it's it can be a it can be a game changer no matter who you're playing against. Now, let's just go ahead and dive into you know what everybody wants to talk about because Stephen, it's interesting, right? We had our conversation a week ago to the date, and if you would have told anybody, hey, South Carolina's going to win by 21 points, cover the 12 and a half, we'd have been ecstatic. We'd have been giddy. But then you look into how it went, and certainly there was a lot left to be desired on the offensive side of the football. And I think especially, Stephen, what the frustrating part is is that we spent the entire preseason talking about the offensive line, how it was the question mark, it was the deficiency last year, and, and you can – you can make every excuse in the book you want, but when you looked at it statistically last year, it just was not very good. That box score on Saturday night, to me, was very reminiscent of some box scores that we saw last year. You watch the game. Is there anything you saw or that you see in particular? Obviously, you're not in the huddle. You're not in the offensive meeting rooms. There's been, you know, people have their, their theories on the scheme. It's too complex. I mean, is there anything in particular that you just notice off the bat watching the game, you say, the offensive line needs to do this or this needs to be fixed? Or maybe it's something Spencer's doing specifically. Like, it, I, I'm sure you can understand why Gamecock fans, we're having just such a tough time wrapping our brains around the, these offensive line struggles yet again. Uh, I mean, yeah, we just spent a lot of time talking about the addition of Spencer Allen. We talked about his ability to extend plays. Um, we talked about the offensive line. You know, that should be one of the strengths because they all came back. Me, personally, from what I saw was 
And again, I'm not in the huddle. I'm not in the offensive meeting room, so I don't know what exactly the reads are. It looked, from my perspective, that that Spencer was almost noticing the rush before it got there, if that makes sense. Um, I feel like he escaped the pocket a little too early at times. Um, you know, obviously there was some some schemes and some blitzes that they ran that, you know, we had a we had a running back that missed, uh, missed a read, from what it looked like, in my opinion. Uh, we had some miscommunication up front, uh, but for the most part, I, I just feel like I saw Spencer running a little bit quicker and taking off a little bit soon based on, based on my opinion. That's, that's all I can say about that. You know, wh- again, whether or not the reads weren't there or whether or not he misread or he just wanted to fucking run. I, I don't, I don't know. Um, but that's just as, as a former player, I just feel like that's what I saw. And yeah. to be honest, man, I was guilty of that as well too. I mean, everybody is, especially when that, that first game in Williams Bryce under the lights, especially the new lights that they got. Um, I mean, you're playing against a team that's super fired up to play against you. Um, you know, their head coach used to be the offensive line coach here. I mean, everybody was jacked up. So, I mean, I, I can understand where he was coming from and try to escape a little bit early and try to make plays with his feet because that is part of his game. Um, you know, I just don't think that the offensive line should get as much blame as I've been reading and, you know, hearing. Right. So you'd put some of it then on, on Spencer Rattler. Do you think there's an, any trust issue? I mean, obviously, it's, it's, it's tough to draw that conclusion, I guess, but – do you think does that come from a trust issue with the O line or just just getting happy feet or because I, I mean he was great on the run I mean I, I thought he what he showed in that is that the guy can make a throw on the run he made some very impressive throws on the move for sure um, yeah I mean I think it is like I said it is a whole new team he's with um, a whole new group of guys you know I, I think uh, I think there may be some trust issues I, again I don't know I'm not in that huddle i'm not in the offensive meeting room so i don't i don't necessarily know what's being said behind closed doors just based on you know being in that position before and again these guys are these guys these offensive linemen they're trying to get paid they're trying to go to the nfl they're not they're not there to just suck ass and miss blocks and miss assignments they're not they're not trying to be bad um i just feel like you know based on what i saw is that he just ran a little bit too soon and you know against uh, against some some higher ranked opponents uh, that are coming up in these next few weeks he's we're not going to be able to escape that pocket that uh, that often and that easily. Yeah. Well, speaking specifically on Spencer Rattler, because obviously, Stephen, that's what I'm so excited for this season is to get your vantage point on the quarterback play specifically. You talked about, you know, him escaping the pocket maybe a bit too early. And, of course, he had the two interceptions. One of them was a high hard ball that went off the receiver's hands and uh, was picked. And then the other one, I, I think I would love to hear your thoughts on this play. But you look back probably should have just taken Juju underneath and said he tries to squeeze that ball in there and it's it's picked off just 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 directed right to the safety um but overall I mean again just from my vantage point and I can't wait to hear yours I thought it was a solid game by Rattler I mean, yeah. game one nothing you know nothing crazy um your your overall takeaways though and just what you saw from Spencer Rattler's game on Saturday night I think he's only going to get better I think he's only going to improve um again I, I don't know why everybody expects us to be Bryce Young in Alabama and just sit back there and just throw the ball and people are just 25 yards wide ass open. That's not, we're not, we're not at that level right now. And we're not, we're not, we didn't play against Utah state. We played against a good ass team. Um, So, I mean, it's, it's, I think we're only going to get better. That's, that's all I can say. As far as that pick that he threw um, the second one, I mean, shit, I would have done the same damn thing. I don't, I mean, that's, that's, I know the term gunslinger and I know people are so sick and tired of hearing that word, but I mean, that's, you live and die by the freaking sword, man. That's just yeah. that's just what it is, and uh, that's all I got to say about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, I I really what impressed me the most about him, Stephen, was was the ability to, and as, as someone that did it yourself, you can respect it. The ability to, you know, extend plays and, and make plays on the move, and uh, you know, I think specifically that pass down the field to Jalen Brooks. I mean, I, I think that's where you can really see the just pure talent of a quarterback when things sort of do break down and you're able to improvise and make a big play. Cause like you're saying, man, like anybody can sit back there and just play seven on seven. And I mean, it's pretty easy to do that, but can you make a play when things break down? And I thought that was sort of a great example of that, that play he had down the sideline to, to Jalen Brooks and the touch on that. And again, just showing off that, that, that pure arm strength and that, that, uh, that throwing ability that made him such a highly sought after prospect. For sure. For sure. I mean, I, I, I know it wasn't pretty, um, and I'm reading some of these comments down here. I mean, I know it wasn't pretty. Uh, it's it's only going to get better, in my in my opinion. I think you know we got out of there with it. We covered the spread. I think we showed a lot of promise on some different areas that we weren't really expecting. I mean, who was expecting us to block two punts for for touchdowns? Who was expecting our guy to kick? I mean, he could have hit those things from like seven yards. I feel like yeah. they were right down the 
middle. I mean, those are those are game changing type systems and plays that we that we're going to be able to use to our advantage down the road when we're playing against tougher opponents. Um, I, I just feel like we're only going to get better with time. I think Spencer's going to get better with time. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more camaraderie with each other. And I just, I mean, I think, I think we got a bright future. Um, you know, based on what I saw on Twitter and people saying I'm changing my prediction from eight and four to four and eight. And I, I know, I know the South Carolina fan base is, uh, is relentless. Um, but I mean, honestly, that's why, that's why I wanted to go there, man. I want to play that. I mean, that's, they are a passionate group of people. And, um, I, I mean, I love, I loved it. You know, they, I caught a lot of shit while being there and, you know, for, for some reason they, they still, I guess, want to hear what I have to say. <laughs> That is true indeed. Sticking, Stephen, with the offensive side of the football because, you know, I, I'll be honest. I'm sure you saw my postgame comments. I, I felt a little underwhelmed. I mean, I, I didn't feel like I came into Saturday night with unrealistic expectations, but, but I think that I did have high hopes of the offensive line being better and there being a push, and to not see it was a little disheartening. Again, like you said, yeah. it's a one-game sample size. And this team, hey, you hear coaches say it all the time. Maybe it's Coach Pete. Maybe it's not, though. There's a lot to it that – Teams make the most improvement from week one to week two. I mean, Shane Beamer has said it over and over again. He wishes they had a preseason because you just never know until you go into week one. So, will this team get better? Yes. Will Absolutely. they have much better offensive performances than they had Saturday night? Absolutely. And they want to score as many points as possible. I'd love to hear your thoughts on just the weapons that Spencer Rattler has to work with. You know, I thought it was really encouraging to see Marshawn Lloyd. He yeah. looks healthy. I thought he looked really shifty, really quick back there. Obviously, we know what uh, <clears throat> what Juju McDowell can do. Jaheim Bell being used as a receiver in the backfield. Antoine Wells had seven catches on the outside. Jalen Brooks sort of broke through, had a big night with four catches for 88 yards. Just talk about, I mean, again, it's just one game, and I'm sure they didn't utilize every single weapon they have, but just what you saw from the offensive side, I feel like you probably agree, you know, if the line can improve and block and Spencer Rattler can continue to improve, the weapons are there for this to be a pretty productive offense. There's no, there's no doubt about it. Um, you know what? I like, I like seeing Lloyd out there, you know, a five wide set and him, you know, Spencer catching, catching, catching pitch, um, you know, little hitch routes. I mean, these guys are playing 20 yards off the ball, 15 yards off the ball, catch and throw it to him. Like I said, he was, he's a shifty son bitch, man. He can run and he runs with, he runs with a lot of aggression. Um, you know, that's, that's a good thing to see. So like I said, I, and like you're saying, like what everybody should be saying, I mean, the, the, there is hope. There is the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you know, I just, I would love to know like what they're saying in the, in those offensive meeting rooms. Cause I know I'm sure the offensive line are here and all oh, you guys are trashy. I mean, they're, they're, they're not, they're not horrible. I mean, they're just, they're trying their ass off. Uh, you know, it's the first, it's the first game, you know, they're trying to get the butterflies out and, you know, I know they came back and they're all like technically veteran players. Um, but still, it's it's a when you start a whole new season. I mean, you kind of experience can take you a far away. But I mean, it's I don't know. I just I just feel like these guys are going to improve uh, dramatically throughout the season. Now, Stephen, the, the dreaded question I don't want to ask you, but I have to play calling. <laughs> did you? It's it's dude. I mean, I know you know this, and, and again, thank goodness that social media wasn't quite the monster that it is now when you were playing. But I know you see it everybody's an offensive coordinator, right? Everybody oh, yeah. feels like they know better than the OC and the play calls. And when you watch, I mean, we can even go back to last year, but specifically Saturday night. I mean, did you, do you find yourself questioning a lot of play calls? Do you feel like it's, it's a good, do you like what they're trying to do? I mean, just your, you know, and again, I'm, I want to make it very clear, Steven, and I feel like you already know this, but I want everybody else to know too. I'm not trying to put you in a position where I'm trying to get you to say anything or, you know, put you in a corner. I, I just want your honest take when you're watching that game. Do, do, do you feel yourself questioning the play calls? Do you feel like it's a good system that Sat's got in place and they just need to execute better? I mean, I mean, you're just overall thoughts on the scheme itself. It's, it's, it's hard to say, man. I, I honestly, I don't know. Um, like I said, I liked that He was going five wide and putting Lloyd out wide and, you know, it's a pitch and catch and let him run around. Um, I like seeing that. I like seeing the five wide. I, 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 it's hard to say, man. It's it's really hard to say. I know that week one, you don't want to necessarily like what Beamer was saying. There is no preseason, so you don't want to necessarily show what your entire offensive playbook is week one. Um, so there's that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I like I like Coach Satterfield as a person. I, whether or not he's a great offensive mind, that's I don't know. I, I haven't yet seen enough of the the Gamecocks season to play. I mean, I, I honestly just don't know. So. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, no, like, like I said, we, we got a long way to go. We got 11 more of these games, and uh, it will all play itself, Alice, most certainly. Let, let's move, Stephen, off the offense to the defensive side. I'll just ask you, obviously, again, as an offensive guy, you know plenty about defense. Uh, I, I feel like South Carolina really held their own defensively. You know, that first opening drive, Georgia State had a good plan. Their bread and butter is running the football. But overall, I thought the defensive line took over, thought linebackers were flying around. The secondary, you know, top 10 in the country last year, they lived up to that yet again. Um, just talk about what you saw from the Gamecocks defense. Again, I, I have pretty good feelings coming out of that game that, you know, it's a long season. It's just one game. Don't draw conclusions. But I feel confident in saying that while it may not be an elite, like, you know, historical unit like Georgia was last year by any means, um, this is a group that should be a strength yet again for South Carolina. Yeah. No, I think when you play against a, a dynamic quarterback like they had over at uh, Georgia State, I mean, I think I think the way – I mean, what, what was he, like 7 of 29 for like 100? Yeah. Like yeah. That, I mean. I think their defense or our defense played really well. I really do. Um, you know, I feel like we definitely manhandled them. Um, we're a bigger, stronger team, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to be, you know, useful in any scenario. But, yeah, I thought the schemes were, were good. Um, you know, we, we got off the field on third downs. Uh, I, overall, I think we played really well. And if we can continue getting better on defense and, you know, staying healthy, I think that's the main thing is just guys staying healthy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think we got a shot to uh, to keep games close. I mean, all I know is I, I watched that Georgia game, and those guys are a freaking machine. So we're going to really have to kind of get our shit together um, in a couple of weeks. I mean, to be honest, Arkansas did not look that great. Um, I know everybody loves K.J. Jefferson, and I think he's a good player. I just think he's <laughs> severely overrated, in my opinion. Um, but, I mean, I think that's a very winnable game next weekend. If, if our defense can play that well, if our offense can, you know, pick up some blocks and, you know, get their kind of communication lined up and – Spencer makes some plays downfield. I mean, I don't see why why there's no reason why we shouldn't win that game. When it comes to improvement, Stephen, for the Gamecocks offense, um, most are going to say block better. That's it. That's that's just where it's going to start and end. Uh, anything else you saw where you feel like the most improvement you'd just like to see personally from week one to week two for the offensive side specifically? I like to see a little bit more a little bit more quick game. Get the ball out of uh, out of Rattler's hand a little bit quicker. Um, get into the playmakers hands and just and let, let them run around. Um, I'd like to see that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously everyone wants to see the the front five guys just blocking and having Spencer sit back there all damn day and, and pick the defense apart. I mean, who the hell wouldn't love to see that? Um, that being said, that's just not realistic. You know, it's, we're not playing in, you know, the PAC 12 where guys are just running around. You got Dorian Thompson, whatever his name is running 95 yards, every single play. Um, it's just, it's not realistic. So yeah, we'd like to see the offensive line block better. We'd like to see them hold their blocks a little bit longer, um, see the running backs pick up guys that are blitzing. I mean, everyone would love to see that. Just That's just not realistic in week one. You know, I think in the communication, fixing the, the fixing the problems, you know, getting back in the film and watching what the hell is going to be going on, get a game plan going, and then going from there. Um, but, yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff to improve on. Um, but I think the main thing that I would want to say, out of, out of saying all of that, I think I want to say that I'd like to see Spencer kind of keep the ball – and move the pocket just a little bit more, you know, not look at the rush to run necessarily, but kind of look around and bounce around and keep your eyes downfield and let the ball go. Mm -hmm. I, I, I got to ask you this, Stephen, again, we talked a lot about passing game. Let's talk running game. Anything specifically you saw in the run game, because you know what, you know what will help out a quarterback and you know, this better than anybody <laughs> is for sure running the football successfully. I mean, you know, I, I talking to, I, I've talked to you, I've talked to Perry Orth before. He's like, you know, there's nothing better than a second and two, you know what I mean? Like you're getting in that second and short and playbooks wide open yeah. Um, did you see anything specifically in the running game? Because obviously it, it's it's a bit concerning when you look at the stat sheet and Jaheim Bell, who's technically a tight end receiver, what have you, he's your leading rusher. You know what I mean? Is, uh, it, is there anything you saw in the run game that you, you feel like could be fixed or just needs to improve overall moving forward? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's not a good stat when when that when he's <laughs> – yeah. Um, yeah, I that's I – don't, I don't know. I honestly don't have an answer for that. Um, maybe it's schemes. Maybe it's play. Call. I, I, I honestly have no idea. Maybe the running backs missed a couple holes. Again, we can talk about it all we want. We're not in that media room, so we have no idea what the coaches are asking these linemen to do. If they're supposed to make, you know, uh, a secondary block and get up field. I mean, we, we don't have any idea what they're trying to do um, or where the running backs are supposed to go. We, we honestly just don't know. Um, <laughs> it's hard to say. I mean, I wish, I wish we had a Marcus Lattimore. I mean, I think everybody in the uh, – South Carolina Nation would love to have another Marcus Lattimore, but, you know, he's a, he's a rare breed. So, who knows? I mean, 
I think I think they're the only good takeaway that we can say right now is that we're one to know and we can we're, we can only get better. That's that's the main thing. Yeah. Now, Stephen, again, I, I said this earlier, but we hear it a lot. You know, football teams, college football teams improve the most from week one to week two. Just expand on what exactly does that mean and why is that the case? I think you kind of like we talked about, you know, um, over the last couple of weeks, you know, you're in fall camp and it's just you're hitting each other for three weeks it's the same shit every single day for three weeks you finally get to hit a team and you know it's just some guys come out flat some guys you know get too amped up i mean there's definitely an even level even keel i mean again we didn't play against some slap dick opponent i mean coach elliott has those guys he's got those guys in a, in a good little position over there um so i mean i think that was a good team win like i said team win i mean you got all three facets of the of the team playing well um, and winning that game. Um, but I think, you know, moving forward, I think we're going to improve those those areas that, you know, improve the offensive line communication. Um, maybe improve. I mean, there's just so many, so many things that we could improve on that I think we will going into this week, too. Like you said, week one to week two, I think, is a huge, huge difference. Now, Stephen, let's, let's look ahead to this weekend, right? The Gamecocks go on the road, opening up SEC play against the Arkansas Razorbacks. And you watched Arkansas on Saturday, correct? Did you watch that game yeah. against Cincinnati? Just your overall, you already talked about K.J. Jefferson, but overall thoughts, takeaways. I heard a similar sentiment from a lot of others. That they feel like, you know, Arkansas, while looking impressive, did look like a beatable team. And I, I do label it as a toss-up game going into Saturday. For sure. No, I think they definitely look beatable. Um yeah, I don't. I don't see any any reason why we shouldn't. Uh, I, I think so. I was just reading these comments, and they're saying that LSU's favor, like, or not LSU, uh, Arkansas's favor is seven and a half points. Yeah, I think if you would have said that, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Arkansas was probably favored twenty points, or you know, mm-hmm. closer to double digits. Um, that being said, I think it's a very winnable game. Uh, I didn't see anything too special about Arkansas's offense, so I, I don't know. I think that's definitely that's definitely a winnable game. I think if we can go into Georgia at two and zero, I think we got a lot of momentum. Going to that game, we got them at home. Uh, I mean, that's we could we could definitely shock some people. We just we got to get our shit together <laughs> for this. Yeah, well, I, and I was going to say for Arkansas defensively, it looked like they were pretty susceptible through the air. Cincinnati was able to have a lot of success in the passing game. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. Again, it's week one, so they may they may make their improvements as well. I mean, who knows? They may blow us out by forty points. I mean, we may beat their ass by forty points. It's week two is always a toss up. It's always yeah. a toss up. Yeah, no, for sure. Like you said, man, it's it's week one for everybody. Everybody has the same feeling, right? Well, we're going to improve the most. We, everybody's saying the same thing. So, I mean, like you said, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Now, you you did you play in Fayetteville or Little Rock? I forget. Did you guys go on the road to, when you were there? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, just talk about that experience. Again, I've heard from – and it's crazy, Stephen. It doesn't even matter the sport because I've heard the same thing from baseball guys that Arkansas fans are just – they're just different, man. I mean, they, they oh. are ruthless. They, they are ruthless, uh, but it's – I mean, I loved it. I thought they were actually funny. Like, they weren't saying, like, hurtful things. They were they were just talking just straight shit, and it was it was hilarious. Um, but, yeah, I, we played – I played there when uh, Darren McFadden – I didn't play. I registered that year. Um, oh, God. The, the game where he ran for, like, 350 yards. Oh, God. Yeah, Darren McFadden ran for, like, 350. Felix Jones ran for, like, 200. Peyton Hillis ran oh. for another 250 or something like that. Um yeah, then uh, then we played again. We played against Ryan Mallett, and um, actually we kind of kept it pretty close. So then towards the end, they just kind of ran away with it. But mm-hmm. Arkansas was really damn good back then, man. They had they had some freaking players. Um, but now apparently they're they're ranked this year. So I guess we'll see what happens. For sure, Stephen Garcia's message to Gamecock Nation: It's going to be okay. We're one and zero. Yeah, panic. Panic. everybody, everybody, just calm down. Everybody, tranquilo, <laughs> tranquilo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, like I said, it's interesting, man. I, I, you know, again, I just call it for what it is. I don't think I've ever ranted as much on a Monday podcast that dropped this morning as I have after a 21 point win. But, uh, you know, here we are. Steven Garcia, yeah. former Gamecocks quarterback. Hey, last thing, the lights. How'd you like the lights? Did you see a lot of the lights on, on TV? Yeah, it's, it's again, like I told you, I think I'm going to have to see it um, yeah. in person, like seeing it on through the, through the TV and on the, on the phone. It's just, it, I don't feel it does it justice, and it's kind of like you're squinting. It's it's kind of just, I don't know. I, I think from what I've heard and some of the things that I've seen on, on Twitter and social media, I mean, it looks like it sounded like it was freaking sweet. Mm, for sure. And you'll be in town. Hopefully, SC State is a night game, but either way. Uh, Steven Garcia, former Gamecocks quarterback. Steven, always a pleasure to chat with you every single Monday, and hopefully, like, a, like we both said, hopefully this time next week we're talking 
and the Gamecocks are 2-0. and But either way, feels good to be 1-0. and Appreciate you taking the time, man. Look forward to doing it yet again next week. Yes, sir, man. Go Gamecocks. Yeah.